to religious freedom versus the woke agenda. What's happening? Well, a couple is suing Washington state, accusing officials of denying their foster care renewal license because they won't abide by rules that require them to use transgender names and pronouns. A Wall Street Journal opinion piece portraying the case as, quote, gender ideology invades the foster care system. That couple joins us now, Shane and Jennifer DeGrasse and Christiana Kiefer. She's a senior counsel at the Alliance Defending Freedom and helping these folks out. Shane, let me start with you and just maybe in your own words, describe what you think you were trying to do here, which is to maintain your principles, but to do something that we really need, which is more foster care parents. Right. When we were going through our relicensing process, the state has new regulations and rules for how foster parents are to um, apply uh, the state's ideology. Yeah, in 2022, we were going through our relicensing process and realized that the state had updated uh, some of their rules regarding foster parents. And one of those rules was requiring us to uh, adhere to their ideology regarding gender identity. And while we said that we would love and care for any child in our home, uh, those were requirements we just could not abide by as Christians. Jennifer, what is the age of the foster care children that you typically take care of? Uh, we are licensed from ages uh, 2 to 18. And so this would apply to even toddlers, so you wouldn't be allowed to take care of a toddler? Correct, yeah. Okay, Christiana, what is their legal right that is being infringed upon here? Well, Washington State is clearly using an ideological litmus test to exclude people of faith from the foster care system, and that's ex that's unconstitutional. Um, but unfortunately, this is not the first time Washington officials have been caught violating the First Amendment in this exact same context. So we're eager to hold them accountable and to ensure that vulnerable children aren't left sleeping in hotel rooms or unlicensed facilities, but are placed in safe and loving homes like the DeGrasse's. I think that's what kind of just confuses me, Shane, too, about the state's position, which is, OK, if they want to talk about a teenager and the teenager wants to be called by a different pronoun, OK, maybe that's maybe there's just like somebody can use some judgment and some common sense, because if you're talking about a two year old, a three year old, the formative years, young years, Shane, they don't even yeah. they don't know what that is. And so the state is cutting off them from care by people like you. Yeah, every child deserves a loving home. And and when the state puts ideology above above children and when Christian families who who exercise their faith are discriminated discriminated against, it only harms children and it it decreases the number of foster families that that can help provide a, a needed service. Foster families do an incredible job of standing in the gap for these children. And so when the state discriminates against people of faith, only children are harmed. Jennifer, do you feel called through your faith to be a foster mom? Uh, we did, absolutely. Yeah. That was why we got into it is uh, we feel called to help, you know, widows and orphans in need, as the Bible says. And we knew there was such a great need in the state of Washington. I mean, currently there's over 8,000 kids in care. So it is just, it's disheartening and it's really unfortunate when the state puts their ideology above the needs of kids. Christiana, what do you think will happen next? Will there be any, is, is there any other precedent? I know this has also happened in places like Philadelphia. No, this is certainly happening, unfortunately, in places across the country. We also represent uh, a, a young mom seeking to foster and adopt in the state of Oregon. But even in the state of Washington, again, they have been caught discriminating against people of faith, seeking to foster, using an ideological litmus test, and they were, they were shut down for that. So the state is unfortunately doubling down on its unconstitutional position, and it's yeah. time that they be held accountable. I just want to leave everybody with this from the Wall Street Journal piece, okay? It says, Washington's foster care system services roughly 8,000 children, the majority 10 years old or younger. By discriminating against families such as the DeGrasse's, the state is reducing the number of homes available to these children, and not just the homes, but the love and care that, as you say, everyone deserves and certainly needs. Thank you. Keep us posted on how this goes forward, and thank you for being willing to help them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.